Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the late one with yours truly, Silver and City, all the way from London, England. And I uh, hope you're well and um, you're fantastic and you're having a good time tonight, which is the night where everything happens with the topics of discussion, the copy country. <clears throat> And when you come on, you just um, share and like and share and like and share. And tonight, the key topic tonight is about the cockpit country, yeah? The cockpit country, and it is from a, a, a diaspora perspective, okay? All right? And it's going to be simple, straight to the point with my guest, Rudy Page, all the way from London, the UK, as we look at how we can uh, find um, solutions. But before I bring on Rudy Page, and um, I can see that he's on, Mark Renaissance, bro, listen, how was the dance? You see, I, I, just, had a, I just had a song clash with um, Mark Renaissance Cameron, a song clash, and... Uh, I don't know who won, you know, I'm not going to claim that I won, you know what I mean? Because, um, but a lady named Christine even came on and said she's going done with, you know? So, um, if you want to check out that, uh, that, that song clash with Mark Renaissance, Cameron and Silver versus Silver and Studio, do check it out on my page and Mark page and see. Yeah. I love, well, you know, Virgin, you know, Mark, I'm happy to say I lost. In order to say that you won, you know, I want you to win, you know what I mean? So I'm happy to say that I lost. I, I, I don't have a problem in, in losing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, I, I've, I've, I, I've got to let you have these opportunities because I saw a little young boy about six or seven years of age run left you to next string. And when he run left you, um, you, you are pull muscles to next string and then little youth laugh after you and you see you're going to, you, you, you're going to um, bet him $20 for him to win or something like that. So I wanted you to win, you know, Mark, I wanted you to win, you know, <laughs> you know, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, I want to, I want to welcome everybody on tonight and I tell you what you do as well. I, I love this. Um, if you just share the video as well, what I'm doing this video now, I'm just sharing it in the cockpit country. And, and different sides, <laughs> blow, 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 <laughs> you know, I mean, you didn't, even, Mark, you didn't even like when I shared videos like Stacy Lattisaw, and uh, you, you play some old tunes, oh boy, before I was even born, you know, but what can I say, you know, ladies and gentlemen, listen, <clears throat> the UK is going through some very interesting time, um, for those who are in the UK, there was a, there's been a spate of knife crime, yeah? I, I, I poly him. There's been a spate of knife crime, and um, the government is trying its best to see what it can do. The government need help, yeah? I, I'll say this straight up. The government need help from the people, and maybe the government is asking for help, or maybe the government is not asking for help, but the government need some help. So what has happened at the same time is that um, they've been talking about the chicken box, the chicken shops which play a fundamental role whereby gangs tend to groom these young children when they go to the chicken shop so because a few persons within the community have been talking about that so what the government did place on the chicken boxes where the chicken is gonna go some stories about why you should not use knife how knife kills until about person inspiring stories now because of that now there's been a kickback by the government by people who are unhappy about that to say it's racist and everything man everything is racist these last days racist to the point that when the real racist issue comes out we won't even know you know but hey who am i to say because those are persons view everything is racist these days and secondly on top of that i can see regarding cockpit regarding not copy regarding the um the government Jeremy Corbyn is the opposition leader. He's saying he wants to take over the country. He's going to go to the Queen and say, I demand that you make me Prime Minister because George Boris Johnson do not have the majority and he does not com command the confidence of the House. So I demand that you make me the Prime Minister. 
So therefore, there's a plan maybe to overthrow the government. You know, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. But but as far as I'm concerned, ladies and gentlemen, it's the UK, and um, and things are going to happen. But then I remember the Tower of London. The Tower of London still exists, and if the Tower of London still exists, are persons deemed to go to the Tower of London? Is it? Because that was where they behead them as off with their head. Is that the case? I don't know, but it's interesting times in the UK. Um, Rudy Page, I can see that you're trying to add yourself. I don't know what happened, but somehow it's it's not happening yet. So uh, um, what, you, what you can do is, um, I don't know. Um, let me see if I can do something to, to, to boost this up. Yeah. If you can... Um, if you can, if you can try again, Rudy, and let me see what what can happen there. And ladies and gentlemen, I, I would encourage you to to share this video. And for those in, um, the, I think I posted this also in the cockpit country uh, groups. I don't know um, if I did it in the right groups. Um, if persons are in the cockpit country, just share this as well, because um, we want to look at this issue here. Because what I found with this issue regarding uh, let me see if I can add with the page. Regarding the cockpit country, is that there are so many different voices. There are so many different persons speaking. There are so many different um, perspectives. And when you hear the different perspective and hear the different voices, then one starts to wonder which is the authentic voice, which is the right voice, which is the true voice. Then you hear the the government speaking and the government giving their argument and the opposition speaking and they're giving their argument. So the question is this, who is saying the right thing? Who is correct? And that is something that Rudy and I want to talk about today because from person's perspective, not just a diaspora, you know, um, not just a diaspora, what, what, you're having, what you're having is a situation whereby persons may not be knowledgeable of the facts and many persons are also speaking from a position of the knowledge that they have now i do not know most of the the facts i know that one thing which is which is factual is that the cockpit country exists and it is very important and it is very crucial and it deals with the, the fundamental ecology of jamaica and we cannot afford for it to be tarnished, for it to be destroyed, and that is the thing. Rudy Page, come on, I need to get you on. Um, let me see if if I can um, um, if if I can uh, let me see if I can get you on, Rudy. Uh, Rudy Page, Rudy Page, you did it well early. I don't know what happened now. Make sure you you set your phone properly. Um, uh, as well, and if you try to, in, maybe if you try to lock it off and turn turn back the phone and and get and 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 get it, Lorna. Good evening, um, uh, as well, and for those who are coming, now, the cockpit country, ladies and gentlemen, and I did a show on this and I did a video as well. It is the largest close. What should I say? Broad leaf forest in the Caribbean, accounts for forty percent of Jamaica's underground freshwater resources and is the watershed for five major rivers. It is also the location of two maroon wars against the British colonizers. The cockpit country is home to over 1,500 species, some of which are endemic to Jamaica and even to the cockpit. Mining lobbies have long eyed the rich bauxite deposit in the cockpit country. And what they're saying, there's been this um, deal to mine there. Some say it was signed off in 2018. Some say it was signed off in 2014. Some say it was signed off from God was a boy. And when God was a boy, God used to wear copy pants. And in the beginning was the word, as Damien Crawford was saying, the beginning was the word. Before that, the cockpit country was signed off. One of the things about Jamaica, Jamaica is very rich, rich in nutrient, rich in, in um, uh, let me see if I can get rid of the page here, rich in, in many things. And we've got to protect our country. Not everything can be for sale, if you agree. Headphone, your earpiece, your earpiece. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're getting there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Earpiece, I'm getting earpiece. I'm getting earpiece. Awesome. awesome. Good, good, good. good, good, good. 
Yes. We're good? Are we good? I'm online. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic, Rudy Page. Good evening from sunny London. Good evening from sunny London. Well, I mean, I West mean, London. I'm, West London, of course. And, and I'm, I'm, all, I'm all the way in South London as well. Um, yeah. I'm having water because it's very hot and sunny, you know what I mean? 100 degrees. It's 100 degrees or so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rudy, well, listen. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know Rudy Page, Rudy Page is the, the guy who coined the phrase um, Afro Hair Beauty. Um, you might have known of Dighton Dreidner, and he's, uh, he's one of the architects of the black hair industry business. No wonder that he has no hair because he has given all his hair away. Is that correct? But let me tell you, though, <laughs> let me tell you, bald is a hairstyle. Really? Oh my day. Remember, did you see Black Panther, the film? Yes, yes. Look how beautiful those women looked in Black Panther. Yes. So bald is a style. So we have what's called the nine principles of Afro hair. Oh, wow. Devised by Derek Clement, actually. Okay. So that's bald, braids, locks, Afro, coils or kinks, weaves or, or waves, and, and straight. So oh. Afro hair is very flexible. So bald is a hairstyle. You remember Kojak? Yes, yes. Isaac Hayes? Yes. They're, they're hairstyles. Yes. So, so you're looking good, young Silver. Well, well, uh, there's a gentleman online which is called Mark Renaissance Cameron. I'm, I'm glad. I, I think he feels good now because he was worried about his not having any more hair on his head. So I think No, he's... no, it's good. Bald is a hairstyle. You have to take care of your scalp. You have to put good oil on it. You have to... You know, brush brush your scalp. Yes. Get you know, and take scalp hair. Sorry, scalp care is really important. But we're not here to talk about hair but, today, are we? Yeah. But one <laughs> one one of the things about hair is that sometimes when you're bald and you're you finish having your bath and you realize that you're rushing to go, it's oh shucks, I've not combed my hair, and you realize, <laughs> cool man, don't have to comb your hair. <laughs> but anyway, Rudy, listen. Yes. Um, we're here talking about the cockpit country, this prime, natural, lush resource in Jamaica. We are seeing the signs. We're hearing people coming up, talking all over Facebook, the media. And in a way, it sounds, if you're not really focusing, it can sound like noise. Right. Right. And one of the reasons why I wanted to have this discussion is to see how we can whittle out the noise and get to the nitty gritty and get the clarity in the world. What's your thoughts on the world based on your perspective? Right, and, and it's true because I've been, people have been saying to me, oh, as a member of diaspora, you should be saying something about the con cockpit country on the one hand. Other people say to me, well, um, can, you, can you say something about it? Yeah. And I've been saying, which we have to do anyway, um, we need to know what, what the facts are, yes. definitely. So we, we've been saying, get the facts. And I've been saying to contacts in Jamaica, please get us the facts, right? So, and those facts will be around, okay. And there's a context as well. There's the political context, the social, economic so you've got all different stakeholders and forces all, all surrounding everything to do with development in the country. Yes. So we, so we, we do need to get some clarity and a consistent message from those who are in the know and have influence on the system itself. Yes. And that's, have you by and large, we haven't really got that. We, we've got announcements and speeches and that we're still not clear because they haven't really set it, the current emotion from people into the context of what's going on and the impact on people's lives. And of course, we don't know what the motives are of all stakeholders and we don't know what decisions have been agreed as well. So we just know overall that we, it's, it's not a good idea to, to um, um, impact the environment in a negative way because in the end, it does hurt uh, the, the sustainability of the local communities. But then at the same time, as we know, 
local communities need jobs, skills and opportunities as well. Yeah. And, and uh, what, what someone That's an said, economic consideration yeah. as well. So yeah. it, is com it is complex and uh, we, we're, we're not really getting the, um, the overall picture. So if you, if you take the Jamaica or Vision 2030 vision for Jamaica, yeah. a, a great place to live, work, bring up children, society, safe, secure, yeah. cohesive society. And that, and that was agreed by all parties that that's the vision for the country. So it would be good if we did have that clarity and consistency from all parties about what, well, what, what are the benefits and what are some of the considerations and, and compromises that are being made. Yeah. Because we, we, we just don't know. Yeah. I mean, I mean um, Rudy, the, the thing, I mean, I've been reading and I've been watching, I've been speaking to different persons, and, and, I, I, and just like when we had the airfare lobby and all these yeah. different lobbies in the UK, because this is a lobby issue at the same time. Yeah. It is having a document. And if yeah. I ask Mark right now, is there a document? And if I ask yeah. anybody, is there a document that sets out certain clear facts? Even if the it is facts, yeah. Even if yeah. It, even if it's from one perspective, the ecological disaster, the the rivers which have maybe um, been um, what should I say dried up as a result of mining, you mm. know, getting some facts. Are there facts? And I believe that is something that many people would like. You know, when we're doing the airfare lot, so that you can balance, so you yeah. can balance, because we have to, we have to, we have to accept there's an economic reality. Yes. All countries have signed up to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The environment is an integral part of that, but there is a, a socio-economic balance, and and again, we 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 just don't even know what the picture is. Yes. We, we've got we've got no ideas. Sorry, carry on. That you you were saying. Yeah. No. I I, I was you know just just mm. talking about the whole aspect of the facts. Getting yeah. getting the fact, and and I think really and truly it is like a, a base, the the base that one operates on because it is like okay. The the copy country um, warriors or the different groups, what is the coordinated factual. Um, um, knowledge which is there on a, a 10 point or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. Government, I can see, is talking about their, their factual issues. The opposition is talking about, it's like, it's like um, when, when I do a threshold document and when I, when I, when we set up a local authority um, um, allegations against a parent uh, for removing a child or so, then you set up the allegations and then the next yeah, one the evidence that, base yeah, that yeah. is the evidence base exactly right and and all parties to some extent agree on what the framework is where the yeah. lines are whether they be red lines or where the lines are at the moment we we're we're seeing different maps so yes we, we need to agree so what is the cockpit country area and how does it relate to political legislative decisions that have been taken yeah. in the last 20 years yes. to what we're hearing now? And, and, that is, and that is correct, because the Prime Minister been speaking about the protected area, trying to protect it. And then persons are saying, hang on a second, we mean protected area. The cockpit country is a cockpit country. No part of the cockpit country should be protected. Every mm. part of But there's a border, though, isn't there? The, where where is the border line because mm. we we can be not we can be talking about the same thing on a different day <laughs> if you think about it yes because i've yet to hear from anybody where is the border line yeah and you can be discussion and we know about current border lines what it's done in the brexit but we're not here to talk about Bre brexit <laughs> Well, we just leave October the 31st. That's all I know. It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, well, well it, is, it is very clear. And I mean, and, 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 and I'm 
I can see uh, Lorna Foster saying it'd be good if we had some facts so we could be more enlightened regarding the cockpit country. Mark is saying the government and opposition are scrambling for answers to defend their irresponsible mining. And, you know, the key thing about government again, they say you vote out the government, you get the government back in. But every different move which is made by the government, the opposition is right there with them, coordinating it, unless there's some little underground screech across the border thing I go on. You know what I'm saying? But the other thing, though, what is good about this debate is that, uh, which is important anyway, is that uh, when you have a, a level of public outrage and concern, it shines a light of transparency. Yes. So even though, so politically, we might say we are where we are. Yes. But there is a public demand for a certain level of accountability. And accountability will mean, okay, well, who made decision? When and where? Who knew what, where and when? And that's one good thing about this um, current concern about the public. But then at the same time, as we alluded to at the beginning, there will still be forces of misinformation and vested interests in all of that. So that's why we, we have to be focused on, we, we need some facts. So even if we get lots of different facts, we, we can be informed. So at the moment we're uninformed and people are, are just reaching into our emotional Reservoir, uh, yeah. side and talking about, you know, the, the Maroon Wars and the Treaty of 1739 and 1795 and things like that. Although there's a historical context, but we, we, we do want to understand the facts. And, and, and it's interesting, really you meant, interesting you mentioned about the Maroon factor there because another discussion yeah. and argument which is coming in amidst the whole cockpit saga is about mm true maroons, you're not maroons, and stuff like that. You guys are the ones that um, sold us off, <laughs> chop off our hands, you know, and, and there's this little division which is happening. I always talk about something which is called the black element, and it is trying to find a common ground that everyone can agree on. And I think that is most important. I think the first part of call is agreeing that the cockpit country must not be touched. I believe that's the first part of call. But, but who... But who... But there, there has to be, you know, um, th there's a term, the price of empowerment is collective responsibility. Yes. Right? And, and in order to get collective responsibility, there needs to be some shared values yes. in terms of putting the issue at the centre that, that's a cause of concern. Yes. And, and that suggests that there would need to be some wide, transparent, um, dialogue amongst all communities, all stakeholders, yes. and all stakeholders having access to the relevant information. And, and, and things and, haven't and, really and, happened, yes, for historical contextual reasons. Yes. So we're 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 we could be whistling in the wind on that one, mm. couldn't, couldn't we? Because the vested interests are quite powerful, and as we've said, decisions have already been made long ago maybe and a process is now being followed because you know there's certain legalities but the good thing is with public outrage decisions can be changed you know you know i i spoke and accountability yeah. you know we don't know who's accountable yeah. I, I, either i who, spoke who is accountable yeah. i spoke to someone i spoke to someone <clears throat> some time ago a few days ago who used to work with the box site years ago you know and ask the person mm. a question, what's your thoughts on it? And the first thing the person said is, some money has been paid. Some, something has been paid, right? We don't know where the money is gone. We need to follow that money. Because, what did they mean? <laughs> well, well, I think Mark alluded to it some time ago that the money has been paid over already. And the money has even have been spent in regards to yeah. why there's this um, desire to really push this whole cockpit factor. Mm. Because... Successive governments are... And who are the beneficiaries? Who are the beneficiaries? Well, it is supposed to be the people and the nation, but, but people are... You know, what, what is the leftovers normally? That's the thing. What is the leftovers? 
Yeah. That's always that's always the big dollar question that one is. Mm. But in all seriousness, though, and um, that's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah. In trying to to get public understanding, so the the public is aware that there's something not right, or it's not sustainable, or it's going to cause inv environmental damage. Mm but they're, they're, they're not informed. So public understanding. So, so where, where we are now, and even us having this type of conversation is that we're really demanding much better public understanding. The public needs to be informed and that there's just not enough information around at the moment. Yeah. <clears throat> well, well, as one writer said, uh, Jamaica was paid for bauxite to be mined. So there's pressure to mine or return the money. And I understand it is a deal for 25 years, 25 years of mining. You know, I don't know if you've driven in um, the place, uh, Mount Russell, you remember the red water there, the Red Sea there, and places where, and it's funny, it looks a bit very desolate in that area. And what, and what the fear is that after 25 years of mining, damaging the ecological structure of Jamaica with the water and that it's like the hub. My thinking is, I, I usually say Africa, Zimbabwe, the breadbasket of Africa, which has been raped and tarnished. And it is somewhat like the, the coffee country is the hub. And it's like there's a lack of food. Don't you, don't you think food. you've gone a bit far about Zimbabwe, just talk of describing Zimbabwe in that way? Well, as a, as a breadbasket of Africa. No, it, it's still, isn't it? I lost it there. As, as a breadbasket of Africa. Yeah, it still is. It still is? Okay, well. Yeah, it still is. Well, I'm just saying, it still is. Okay. It's good. But we can't leave out the, rea the economic... You know, in this environment, we talk about the iron laws of economics. And the economics, there's, there's some iron laws set down there. So we, we, we can't, we can't, um, mm. we, 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 we can't dismiss that and not think about the economics and the impact on the whole economy, jobs, businesses, electricity, sustainability, all these things that make society work. And people are making decisions on balance mm. and saying there's compromises. But it's just that we, we, we go back to the information still, don't we? We, we, we? We're uninformed. Well, I mean, I can see a couple of persons here saying, we do know who is now accountable. It doesn't right. matter who started it. When it ceases, okay. we'll get back to those who idea it was in the first place. Uh, okay. uh, Ms. Bogle says, until everyone work together and listen, there'll be no common ground to work on our stand on because the government must get it right and for the public to understand and I, I, and this is what i'm getting we must work together on this but the key question right. but the thing which i'm asking the question and that's why i said mm -hmm. let, us, let me not talk to a ubix let me not talk to a Baines, let me not talk to a basil way let me not talk to a government official but let, mm. let i just break it down in a way to say where we where our thinking is looking at it from the outside and what yeah. and what we're seeing from the outside is that there's a lack of a collective togetherness on the subject matter. Exactly. Remember what I said, the price of empowerment is collective responsibility. Yes. And that's the reality. And yes, in society, you will have different groups who are trying to, to, to be, to hold, the term we use is not uphold the, values they're trying to impose on others yes and that's where the accountability comes in in terms of the public public resources public assets community assets there's the, that accountability and we, we we need we need it to go in steps yes we, we need to be informed yes we need to be informed so, so therefore, so that we can make some some decisions, yeah. and we can understand about what decisions are being and why the decisions are being made, and yes. and uh, you know, 
Well, listen, Rudy, we, we have worked together on lobbying issues with the UK government, mm. and we have seen the different strategies on lobbying. What would you say now, instead of us having long discussions sometimes on this, what mm. would you say is the next step um, that needs to be employed because they're, they're, you know, to move forward and get in this level of clarity? Yeah, and you, you raised a good point earlier on, and we need to see a document that gives us the context the background and context to the current public concern yes. about what's going on. There's no, there's, there's nothing I've seen that we can evidence. There's different things that have been said that have uh, levels of emotion in, which is fine. Yes. But we just don't have the background, and there will be feasibility studies around. Yes. And there will be some really good ones that probably the, the, the answer's right staring us in the face. How many of us have read those feasibility studies yes. or even know where they are online to read it? Yes, yes. And, and, and maybe we need to look at people who've got ex experience and understanding of environmental matters and environmental feasibility studies to explain yes. in a very simple way because what you want is people who can explain Yes. In a simple way, so there's public understanding. So, so we 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 need information that enables us to better understand, I, so that we're yeah. informed. I, I tell I tell a why it's very interesting as well because I was sent a get to fund me, I'm trying to seek twenty thousand dollars, and and one of the reasons. What U.S. Why, dollars or Jamaican no, dollars? U.S. dollars. To, yeah. to conduct legal research and engage lawyers to file mm. injunction against actions taken and request judicial review of the process undertaken. B, mm. to conduct public education because the other side is miseducating the citizens and painting a narrative based on untruth. Now, when I read this, what is said mm. here, because the other side is miseducating. Mis when I hear yeah. the other side, you know, you other side. don't know what that he's talking about. So therefore, mm -hmm. to mobilize the public consultation, which are required as part of the environment, this need a collective <laughs> responsibility thing. It, it exactly. Needs... We go back to collective responsibility. Yes. yes. Because that's the only way you're going to get public confidence. Yes. So there's something that we talk about trust and confidence and public trust and confidence. Yes. So if you're going to engage in that type of um, wanting to get the public on board, you, yeah. you can't be seen to be partisan. Exactly. Exactly. It's as simple as that. Otherwise, you just come across as another vested interest. Yes. And people will question your motives. And, and they'll, want to know, they'll want to know more. And, and one, of, one of the unfortunate reality of Jamaica is that if somebody starts a campaign for it or against it, and they recognize that they have some allegiance with a political party. Their level mm -hmm. of credibility has gone through the door because they said, oh, you're just political because you're paying for your GLP. So, yeah. which is unfortunate, you know? And so therefore- That's a reality though, isn't it? There's, there's again, if we look at the cultural context, yes. and you can't, you, can't, you can't leave out the cultural tribal context of any society. Yes. Anyway, that, that's just a reality. Yes. And, you know, that's exactly as you say. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. So, so therefore, so therefore, mm. action one, the need for this clarity of having this fact sheet by the key stakeholders to set up what are the concerns of people nationally, globally, can understand. Because as you said in our private conversation earlier, even people in Jamaica don't understand the full ramifications of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's... Yes, such, indeed. Yeah, so there's such a clear need for that. And then to hear, to really uh, put the government to task, because right now, just like with Brexit, <laughs> they will say, it's the prime minister, it's the conservative, they're the ones who get us in. Mm. They need to get us out. We don't care about the working together of the, the, the parliamentary system. Yeah, and if you think all governments have signed up to various UN policies around the sustainability the the environment the environment so i go back to what my point earlier on when i said we touched on accountability 
and also uh, all parties upholding the values that they try to impose on others. Yeah. So, so it would be good to understand very clearly how all of this does meet Jamaica's environmental obligations and its and it's you know and the, the good and welfare of, of the people that does it meet does it meet all those things and yeah. if that does well we, we need to read something somewhere that that tells us it does yeah and that the current public concern yes and um, and, and i'm putting an appeal here if it, anyone who is on this live know yeah. a fact sheet that sets it out yeah. in 10 points 20 points about it, please send it. I mean, we can work on trying to, to assist in that process. Send the link. Send so the, send the link. Yeah. Any any studies that are clear in order for the public to understand, Yes. then it, it would, or feasibility studies, because again, feasibility studies would have been carried out. They would have been funded by various bodies, and academic bodies, <laughs> consultants maybe, yeah. <laughs> Good consultants, <laughs> right, Consult as well. And consultation, because... The, and the, public consultation, but, because, but, but, again... But, but, I want to stop it there, because mm. the, the whole aspect of consultation is that there has been consultation. That doesn't mean right. to say you go with the the, 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 the the positive or the majority of views. You just want to make sure that you had consultation. Yeah, because you can have a public consultation... Uh, you can give people 12 weeks notice or 12 hours notice. One person can turn up or 1,000 people can turn yes. up. So it's consultations, you know, it, it, what does it really mean anyway? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Are you there? Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah, still here. Yeah, well, yes. any, anyway. Um, we, I'm sure we'll have to talk about this again. Yes, yes. Hopefully... After tonight's broadcast, we'll get more information. In, indeed, indeed, and also to improve our understanding. We right. need to improve our and we need to be informed. Informed. That's the thing. Intelligent. We need to be informed and have intelligence. Exactly. Exactly. And have intelligence. Yeah. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard it straight. Um, that, that's the the thinking that we have here from uh, Rudy and myself. I'm uh, I'm not speaking on behalf of the diaspora i'm just speaking from silver perspective <laughs> and really perspective. Yeah, and, uh, exactly it's our personal point of view yes. based on people keep saying to us what are you doing why yes. don't you do something because yes. i've got friends who yes. keep saying that i should be doing something and i say well what what is it i should be doing different to what you 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 should be doing yes yes and so so therefore with, with my network and platform is to exactly be an empowering tool as well but I, yeah. we, we need to make sure that we are being responsible and not making noise that people have to go and apologize <laughs> online for saying <laughs> wrong things and foolish things. Yeah, but this doesn't <laughs> help. But we go back to that key sentence, the price of empowerment is collective responsibility. Yes, yes. Really important. And, and ladies and gentlemen... And, and respect. Yeah. You have to respect everybody as well. Yeah. We've got different points of view, different opinions different ways of getting to the final goal, but we should still respect each other. Yeah. And, and ladies and gentlemen, when you hear Rudy speak, you listen to what Rudy speak, and what he's saying is a top consultation guy that worked with the NHS and all those sort of things. And, uh, and, what, what, and that's one of the reasons why I said, let me bring him on to sort of set the tone because eventually I'll be bringing on persons like you, Dixon, and other stakeholders in to hear their perspective but we want to set the stage, set the tone um, as we get these facts, as we get this information so persons can be empowered with um, clarity and knowledge as we take the fight further to save Jamaica, land we love. See, I, see maybe, I'm a, maybe I'm a flag. Maybe I'm a flag here, you know, straight out of, straight out of yard. A true, a true patriot. <laughs> true patriot. And, and if, it, if I talk about Brexit tomorrow, I have on the British one. <laughs> of, 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 of course, of, of course. But Rudy, course. listen, let's, ladies and gentlemen, just moving on yes. from that, you're onto some other great things, isn't it? You're, you're, yes. You're onto some, some great other projects in the UK. With Give us a, a brief nutshell of those other things. So very quickly, we've got a big project up in Haringey. 
1987. You remember Bernie Grant? Yes. And he was very influential in, in, in the establishment of the West Indian Cultural Centre. Yes. So at the moment, uh, the West Indian Cultural Centre is, at, at, again, taking its place as a beacon in the community in that part of London, yes. hosting events and activities around young people and business, entrepreneurship. So it's going to be the centre for yes. that. And also Haringey. Uh, Haringey historically were linked with Clarendon. So we're actually reconnecting Haringey and Clarendon. So that's the leader of the council, the mayor, of giving the go ahead. You know, we'll be discussing with High Commissioner Ramakan shortly about it. Um, we've got the Football Futures Programme as well, um, focused on 2022, you know, Jamaica's 60th anniversary. Mm. So there's going to be a tour, a summit, and it's very much about the role of sport yes. in in transforming local communities. So we talk about communities that are inclusive, peaceful, caring, and enterprising neighborhoods, both here and abroad, given the context that we're all in at the moment when it comes to reducing youth violence. Yes. But also, yeah. we, we have to look at ways of intervention and prevention and that's around uh, the West Indian Cultural Centre in October will be launching a holiday club for primary school youngsters. Yes. They've already started to host maths class from four till six in the evening. Again, we're saying that young people coming out of school, they don't have to hang around the town centre. They can come to the centre and, and be involved in something that's going to contribute to their learning and skills. Will they have chicken? Um, there? There's a, 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 hopefully, no, <laughs> because in terms of uh, diet and nutrition, we would like to veer our way, our community away from chicken, if if we can. Yeah. And obviously, the same with drinks. The high level of diabetes yeah. in our communities, both here and in Jamaica but not just Jamaica, but the whole of the Caribbean community, whether they're here or in the Caribbean, we have a very high level of diabetes. And, and obviously these sort of things um, impact on the mental health, mental well-being. So there's lots of challenges that we have. But the good thing is that we have a lot of good, clever people yes. who are willing to collaborate. And as they all say, you use the good to put right. And, what is wrong and you also you also did the recently just a couple of months ago whereby you had, when you had issue at the west indian cultural center in haringey you also had a person with the diabetes or blood what the blood people were there or so as well yeah yeah so we had the um know your blood time yes which is important because obviously we have people with sickle cell and one of the challenges we have in our if we talk about the Caribbean as a population group, yes, that we do need to make uh, do more around donations because sickle cell is still a high prevalence of sickle cell in the community, and it's important to get the same blood from your same ethnic group, blood from the same ethnic group mm. because that it improves the well-being of the recipient. And so we've been helping to promote that. And of course, we cannot leave out the Windrush yes. scandal. So at the centre as well now, the centre is uh, going to be a, is a regular host for the Windrush Community Service, yes. surgery, sorry. And that is about regularising those people who need to regularise their stay, but also the Windrush Compensation Scheme which is a totally different thing. Yes. And we need the community to better understand that because a lot of people don't realize that there's three different elements to the scheme yeah. itself. Yes. So those who have been impacted by the scheme, by the Windrush scandal directly, those family members who've been impacted, you know, they may have had to provide support etc and sustenance for those who had in, be, been impacted and then of course those who have now passed on as well so a lot of people don't realize this 
this is a uh, uh, something's going to last probably at least another two generations. Yeah. And, and Rudy, in terms of the Caribbean yeah. community, yeah. And Rudy, do you think that the information um, getting out there has been dampened regarding the wind rush as, as the momentum has gone to some extent? Or well, it, again, if we go back to that word, the price of empowerment is collective responsibility, Sylvan. Yes. So uh, at what point do we say as the Caribbean community, this is our responsibility and the, those of us who are in a position to provide a platform and to inform the community what, what is our role? Yes. How, how are we collaborating within ourselves? Yes. It, which is a challenge. And, and of yeah. course, we, we actually do need to, we do need Windrush uh, events in Jamaica and in the Caribbean itself. And we, we haven't even tackled that yet. So yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's lots of issues to be tackled around Windrush. You know, it's interesting what you said right there, because when I was listening to and, and watching lots of discussions today about the, the narration on the chicken boxes to encourage people not to use knife, um, a, a few persons were saying that all that fund and money which is used for that, it should be mm -hmm. going into programs to, mm -hmm. to help the young people within the community. Mm -hmm. And then I put it to someone and I said, can you imagine if each borough, let's use it each borough, mm -hmm. decide to pay something into some fund weekly of two pounds mm -hmm. weekly. We can take care of our own community, take care of these centers. Mm -hmm. It's about what you talk about working together collectively instead of waiting. You mentioned about that yeah. instead of waiting for something to happen, let myself, other persons with our media outlet, share the information about the wind rush and not yeah. wait for the mainstream, if anything. It, it, exactly, because the collective responsibility. I'll I, I give you a good example. Yeah. One thing that I learned that I hadn't really appreciated Every year, Caribbean people or the various Car English-speaking Caribbean countries and the diasporas celebrate their independence. Yes. And, um, and, the, and in one of the compensation schemes meeting, it was very simple. The minister said a lot of people from the Caribbean didn't realise when they became independent countries and nations, their relationship with the UK changed. Mm. But we've been celebrating for how many years? The, the independence and the anniversary and, you know, lots of speeches and newspaper articles. Parties, and... yes. So, but then whose responsibility is that in terms of understanding that as an independent nation, to some extent, that, that relationships have changed yeah yeah and, and we did we didn't really we didn't we didn't really so in other words what i'm saying is also is that some of the voices who were saying that they were having a hard time we we, we didn't hear we didn't hear and then do something about it early enough we're running to catch up yeah yeah it's it, it's a big challenge right so so really it's actually we've got, we've got to be on top of it you know well Rudy, um Unless, yeah. Unless there's anything else, anything else you want to share? Yeah. One last thing is yeah. that um, coming up, um, well, you know, Sylvan, after the uh, Jamaica 55, so we uh, celebrations. I was co-chair with Janelle Rayburn for for the celebrations. So we we had something called the um, Economic Growth Forum UK. Yes. We've now changed that body now, um, which High Commissioner Rak Ramakan is the, is the patron, to the Jamaican Diaspora Economic Forum. Yeah. And so we're going to focus much more around some of the work, and particularly the work being done, initiated by the Bank of Jamaica, Yes. where they recently did a survey amongst the diaspora and they're looking at things from the diaspora's perspective as the sender uh, and in terms of, and the, and the greater understanding of the economic contribution mm. 
mm. of the diaspora in terms of eco the economic development, what the diaspora does. Obviously, we know through remittances goes primarily, or people thought historically it was primarily about education, you know, health, family matters. But of course, the, the diaspora is much more sophisticated than that. Yes. And, and so, and I think it's really good because one of the challenges the diaspora still has is uh, that there hasn't been this relationship between the executive agencies that operate in the UK and their relationships with the diaspora, given that they want uh, the same thing as the diaspora. They want to improve the economy of Jamaica. Yes. So, so I think now with the Bank of Jamaica's uh, intervention, there's going to be better information in terms of uh, informing policy. And that's something that we haven't had from the, in the diaspora. So, so involvement, a representative voice, because wow. there still isn't that representative voice in terms of the diaspora. Right. So, so there's a significant change uh, being worked through. And, and the other thing, we're doing it in collaboration with colleagues, Philip Bedwood in, in New York and colleagues in Canada as well. Yeah. So, so we're talking about, which is really important, it's about data. Data, uh, implementation, data and academic r rigor. So we're linking those three things, which historically hasn't been done. So what, what, the, what, what is the evidence of the activities of the diaspora in Jamaica? Very practical. What have they delivered? What are the projects? What are the programs that have actually been delivered? Yes. The data of the diaspora, which we have now, the UK, US, Canada, all the breakdown through the offices of national statistics, et cetera, et cetera. The data is there. And then the academic rigor, yeah. which is, again, and we've touched on it earlier on about what the facts, you know, what the facts, what the reports and things like that. So, right, right. so yeah, so interesting times ahead. Okay. Over the next couple of years. Fantastic. <clears throat> and you'll hear yeah. it first here on the late one. Um, <laughs> With your tuning. <laughs> the great, the great Sylvan show. Sign up today. Sign up today. Like and subscribe. Not like landing. Exactly. Like, like and subscribe. Yeah. Exactly. But listen, exactly. That, thanks for that. And of course, this video will go in circulation as well, so yeah. persons can listen to what we're. And in recapping, it was about the the whole aspect with the cockpit country and that. We get the need, facts. We need to get the we facts. We want the facts. We need to get the facts. And. That is our charge, and of course, we'll follow this up as as much as possible. And uh, but let us see um, a, a couple of comments as well from persons online. Um, if I if I can if I can find any, uh, there's a Beverly Bogle who is who is your your fan. <laughs> I know Beverly. <laughs> I hope she's saying nice things. About she's me. saying nice things, you know. Okay, good, <laughs> good. Um, we do um, until everyone work together and listen. Yeah. Somebody said yes. Good. Stop the bull. This registration was done in 2015 with a lot of hard work. That is regarding the whole thing. Rudy Page is a very good consult consultant. Very very good conference between you both. Yes, let's make it happen. So, yeah, so Rudy, so listen, thanks for that. And uh, I guess let's get the message going out and I'll keep along that particular line. Try to stay away from the, uh, as you rightly say, emotion is important and everything, but we, we need to get the facts and we need to empower people with the information as well. Yeah, we, we, it has to be authentic. Yeah, authentic. Be because the emotion, it, it has to be authentic. Yeah. It has to be authentic. And we accept that if it, the impact on people's lives but we we don't want to just follow without being informed yes. and you know people yes. in the end people see through that anyway in the end yeah 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 and you and you won't be taken seriously where you need to be taken seriously and we all want to be taken seriously not in any absolutely <laughs> all right well, Rudy, listen <laughs> thank, thank you so much for coming on and, and all Great. the best all right all right okay. take care thank you sir yeah, bye, bye.
Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on. And um, and as I said with Rudy, as we we're talking about today, um, it's very important with the whole cockpit country um, discussion and what is happening that we fully empowered with information. And that information is what is going to take us through. Uh, a lot of persons are aware of the issues, aware of the concerns, but what is lacking is facts, a, a fact paper that sets out clearly the issues, even the pros and cons, even the suggestions or anything, but something that people can look at, right? Something that those overseas can run with. Um, of course, there's going to be different sides, different um, person's perspective, different views. But hey, that's our perspective and that's our challenge as well to the key stakeholders. But most importantly is that we are, we are very supportive and we are very encouraging and we are there and we want to offer a platform that they can also use us as well in getting the voice because it is very important that the cockpit country is not mined. It's very important that as well, they talk about the lime tree, sorry, lime, lime thing and all those sort of things. It's not just the bauxite. There are many other aspects that reach ecological area in Jamaica. All right. So that's all we got to say today. And um, all the best. And remember to, to share this. Shelly, how are you? Ron, thank you guys for coming on. And for new persons, remember to um, like and subscribe. I'll put this on YouTube eventually after as well. And, uh, and if you know of key information, and if you know certain key facts, ping them across to me, info at silburn.com. I'll put the email address, info at silburn.com. Email me, if anything, and let us pull something together as much as possible. Info at silburn.com. That's my email. Bingo. There we are, straight out of Ochi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, and have a good night, and peace out. God bless. Thank you.